Microsoft Business Applications. So you might have heard about them, but what are Microsoft Business Applications? So in this video, we're going to answer that question. We're going to cover at the high level the different parts that are making Microsoft Business Applications like Dynamics 365, the Power Platform, Power Apps, Power BI. We will also explain what are they used for and how they can help you and your organization. So Microsoft Business Applications are a set of business management applications effectively that help organizations be more efficient, streamline their processes and make better decisions using data. As of 2025, the two main categories of Microsoft Business Applications are Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform. So let's start with Dynamics 365. So Dynamics 365 are a set of business applications that have pre-built capabilities to cover specific scenarios and processes. Some of these include sales, customer service, or finance, and many more. I have added a link actually to the Microsoft website where you can see the full list of applications currently available. So if you take a look at the sales app, the app lets you, you know, catch up on sales activities, right? So you can quickly find what are the latest activities you as a sales representative need to action. You can also qualify opportunity from leads to account, contact and opportunity and manage effectively opportunities. You can track the progress of your sales activities and you can, for example, also forecast sales, right? So if we now take a look at the customer service app, the customer service app effectively provide a set of features to manage case, knowledge article to effectively help you resolve issues and problem raised by your clients. So as we said, Dynamics 365 really help your organization address specific processes and scenario, like we said, sales, customer service, finance, field service, and so forth. Now let's explore the Power Platform, which is Microsoft no-code, low-code platform for creating custom applications, data visualization, and automated workflow, and all these enrich with powerful AI capabilities. Now, as of 2025, the Power Platform is made up of five key components, which are Power Apps for application development, Power BI for business analytics, Power Automate for process automation, Power Pages for external facing websites, and Copilot Studio for AI Power Copilots, right? Make sure to check out the official Microsoft documentation that I have added in the description of this video, because again, depending when you watch this video, the number of components might have changed. So let's start with Power Apps. So Power Apps effectively let you build application using low code, right? So here we can see an example of a custom app to manage, for example, trainings. And what you get is kind of a user interface already predefined for you, right? So what you have to do then is you can rapidly add tables that store data to your application. So you can see a list of records here. So those records here effectively are natively stored in Dataverse. So Dataverse is used here, but you can also store data in SharePoint or Microsoft SQL Server. And you can also build apps completely changing the user interface. So there are effectively two types of Power Apps. There is what we call the model-driven apps, where you build your app based on data, tables, you build your forms, your views on top of them. And then you have what we call Canvas app, where you can completely change and alter the user interface. What you also get is additional AI capabilities, like a Copilot that can work next to you. And you can also create apps using Copilot. So you will have an AI helping you build an app based on business requirements. It will even propose for you the table structure with the diagram of all the tables. So there's a lot happening with AI in that space as well. So let's now cover Power BI. So Power BI is a business intelligence and data visualization tool that provides real-time insights into an organization's data. It provides a range of features for analyzing and visualizing data, including interactive dashboards and data exploration. So how does Power BI work, right? So if you look at the previous example we had with our Power App where the data is stored in Dataverse effectively, 
you can straight away connect from Power BI into the data source like Dataverse and create rich visuals and write reports and dashboards based on your data. But you can also complement your reports with additional data from other systems, right? So you can connect it, for example, to an enterprise system like SAP. You can connect it to other databases or stored in SQL servers or any other technology. You can even ingest data stored in Excel and then mix all these data sources and produce rich reports to help your organization effectively see what's going on under the hood. So let's now cover Power Automate. So Power Automate lets you create automated workflow between applications and services. They really help you automate repetitive business processes such as communication, data collection, decisions, updating other records and so forth. And this workflow can be triggered by events, such as receiving a new email. And then you can effectively create additional actions in your workflow. Those actions can be, for example, you know, create text with GPT using a prompt, getting your profile from Office 365, posting a message somewhere, creating a record in Power Apps, and so forth. So let me show you an example of how that might work in Power Apps. So you could effectively create a Power Automate that triggers an update of a record in our Power Apps. And remember the data is stored in Dataverse, so we would use the Dataverse trigger. So on update of a record in Power Apps, we then create a new record in that same Power App. So for example, a student finished a training, we can create a task for a supervisor to review the training. And you can take it further even because you can connect to additional connectors. So we can connect, for example, to the SharePoint connector and then have an action to create a document in SharePoint using Power Automate. Okay, so now let's cover Power Pages. So Power Pages is effectively a local tool for building and administrating external facing websites. So same as Power Apps, you can use a rich designer to configure and design your pages. And I guess the biggest advantage of Power Pages is that you can store the data in Dataverse, which is also used by other applications within the Power Platform. So effectively what you can have is use Power Apps for in your internal users and then exposing that data or some of that data into Power Pages where that data is then available to external facing users. And finally, let's cover Copilot Studio. So Copilot Studio effectively is again a low code uh, platform that lets you build Copilot, custom Copilot, so effectively custom AI agents that you can very quickly uh, create. You can effectively add additional knowledge to the agent, so you can you know, point them to external facing websites where they can grab knowledge, you can add SharePoint documents and locations where they can get information from. You can even connect them to Dataverse, your, your Power Apps, where the data is stored in Dataverse, right? To retrieve information from there. Um, you can add additional uh, trigger points uh, for your agents to start, you know, um, their automated processes and so forth. And then effectively, you can rapidly also test your agent, right? So in this case, for example, I'm asking my agent specific questions that they can find on my website and you can test them out and retrieve and see how the information has been provided to a person that might have asked that question, right? So after you have created your agent or your copilot here, you can effectively publish them. And again, using the channels, you can publish them to external websites, to all kinds of different channels again, so that they can be accessed and used by your users. So complementing those five key components of the Power Platform are additional features. So let's look first at connectors. So think of connectors like bridges that are connecting different applications, right? So you can connect, for example, Power Automate to Dataverse, to SharePoint, to Salesforce, to Gmail, any other application. And there are thousands of connectors available that you can leverage. So next one is AI Builder. So AI Builder lets you add additional AI capabilities to the app you build. So you can leverage pre-existing models or features instead of building them, you know, using code or by yourself. So you can use AI Builder, for example, to read and understand documents, recognize object in images, and predict future outcomes. 
That I've heard that we have seen me using a few times when I was presenting Power Apps, Power Automate, and so forth. So Dataverse is kind of an intelligent, smart storage system, right? Where you can store data, you can organize your data, you can share information very easily and so forth, right? So you effectively store the data in tables, you keep them nicely organized and secure, and you let effectively your application in Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, Power Pages, and so forth, access this data that is nicely stored and organized in Dataverse. PowerFix, so PowerFix is used across the Power Platform as a formula language to build logic. So think of it as almost like the formulas you use in Excel, PowerFix is very similar to that. And managed environments, so managed environments help you control, secure, and monitor all your Power Apps that you created, your Power Automate, your Power Pages. So you can also effectively set rules of who can create, share those applications. You can monitor usage, and you can improve security of preventing unauthenticated users accessing your applications. So complementing Microsoft business applications are, of course, the Microsoft 365 suite of products. So you can think of Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and so forth, right? So they integrate natively. So for example, from Dynamics 365 or Power Apps, you can integrate with your email, sending out, receiving email, tracking them in those apps, syncing appointments. Word and Excel, you can export, of course, data in Excel templates, in Word templates with nicely formatted, you know, documents that you can then convert to PDF and so forth. SharePoint and Teams, right? So this is collaboration. Again, you can store and integrate your documents in SharePoint. You can have your apps directly visible in Teams. You can have your team messages within Power Apps or within Dynamics 6.5. So there is a lot of native capabilities and integration between these. Copilot, of course, all the way. So Microsoft 365 Copilot can leverage data stored in your Power Apps, in uh, you know your Dataverse tables. There is a lot of Copilot components as well in Power Apps and Dynamics 365 to summarize contents of uh, you know records to help you prefill some forms and so forth. So there's a lot going on there with your Copilot and AI. And finally, you can extend Microsoft Business Application with Azure services, right? So you can think of identity and access management. So uh, your all your identities and access management to those specific apps are stored in Azure. You can extend that to leverage external identity as well. Additional AR services, data analytics, custom development, integration, Internet of Things, any services stored and, and available in Azure can be leveraged to extend your Microsoft business applications. Voila, I hope that you like this video. And if that's the case, give me a thumbs up and don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing more videos like this one about overviews of technologies in Microsoft and so forth. So see you in the next one. Bye.